In this video, we're going to talk about titrations. Titrations is a common laboratory technique that shows up on the MCAT exam. Many of you have probably done this technique yourself in your general chemistry laboratories. So first of all, titrations is a laboratory technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So the idea is that in the lab, someone left a beaker of a solution and instead of just pouring it down the sink, you want to dispose of it properly. So you want to find out what's its concentration. And you can do that by first putting a pH probe in the solution. And when you do so, you're going to see that the pH is either going to be above 7 or it's going to be below 7. If it's below 7, that means your unknown solution is acidic. So you're going to add a strong base of known concentration. If instead the pH is above 7, that means your unknown solution is basic and you're going to want to add a strong acid of known concentration. Now, there are some additional terminology you might see in the MCAT. So the unknown solution is sometimes also called the analyte. The strong base or strong acid of known concentration that you're adding is called the titrant. All right, so now as you produce or as you perform a titration, you're going to measure the pH and generally you're going to see a curve. When you're looking at the curve, there are a couple points of interest that the MCAT likes to test. These are the equivalence points as well as the half equivalence points. So the equivalence point occurs when you have complete neutralization of the unknown solution. As we saw in the previous video, you can calculate the concentration or volume of the unknown solution using the equation NaVaCa equals MbVbCb. At this point, when you have complete neutralization, it means that the moles of the acid is equal to the moles of the base. And remember, if you combine acid and base, what you're left over with is salt and water. Water, of course, is neutral, so that means the pH at the equivalence point is determined by the salt formed. So if you formed a neutral salt, the pH will be 7. If you form an acidic salt, the pH will be less than 7. And if the salt form was basic, then your pH is greater than 7. All right, so that's the equivalence point. We can also talk about the half equivalence point. Though the equivalence point is when you have added a volume of titrant where you have completely neutralized the unknown. When you add half of that volume, right, so whatever volume it, take to, it took to get to equivalence point, just look at half of that volume on the titration curve. That is the half equivalence point. At the half equivalence point, half of your unknown has been neutralized by the titrant. Now, for strong acids and strong bases, it doesn't mean too much, but when you're doing the titration of a weak acid or weak base, it's important to know that when half of your unknown has been neutralized, that means half of your acid has been converted to conjugate base, or vice versa, half of your base has been converted to conjugate acid. And you recall, when you have equal quantities of a weak acid and conjugate base, or weak base plus conjugate acid, you have a buffer where the pH is equal to the pKa. All right, so let's take a look at how this works with a couple titration curves. And in this case, I'm showing you two different curves, one where the unknown is a weak acid, and the other where the unknown is a strong acid. In both cases, since the solution is acidic, that means your titrant is going to be a strong base of known concentration. So in both cases, we're going to go ahead and use one molar sodium hydroxide as the titrant. So you can see at first, when you haven't added any titrant at all, you have a very low pH because it's acidic. And gradually, as you add the titrant, the pH starts to increase with this characteristic shape. Now, we want to identify these two points, the equivalence point and the half equivalence point. The equivalence point is the middle of the steep region of the curve. So that means for this weak acid, this is the equivalence point. And for the strong acid, this is the equivalence point. As I said, the pH at the equivalence point depends on the type of salt formed. When you combine a strong acid with a strong base, you end up with a salt that is not acidic or basic. You end up with a neutral salt 
So because you have a neutral salt, that means when you're doing the titration of a strong or weak, sorry, when you're doing the titration of a strong acid or a strong base, you end up with a pH of 7. When you look at a weak acid, when you completely neutralize it with a strong base, the salt that you form is a basic salt. It has no acidic properties, but it is weakly basic. So since you form a basic salt, that means your pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. How much greater than 7 it is depends on the specific weak acid that was the unknown. All right, so that's the equivalence point. Let's now talk about the half equivalence point. So when you're looking at the graph, it took some volume of the titrant to get to the equivalence point. So let's say in this case for the weak acid, it took 50 milliliters to get to the half equivalence point. Uh, or sorry, 50 milliliters to get to the equivalence point. So that means if you look at the graph, at half of that volume, 25 milliliters, you have right here the half equivalence point. Now, remember what I said was important. When you're looking at a weak acid, the half equivalence point has a pH equal to the pKa of that weak acid. So that's the half equivalence point, that's the equivalence point. Now, remember, for a strong acid, you have an equivalence point where the pH is going to be a neutral salt, so it's 7. You do have a half equivalence point, but for a strong acid, you cannot say that the pH at the half equivalence point is equal to the pKa. That only works for weak acids. And the reason why it doesn't work for strong acids is because strong acids completely dissociate in solution. So it's impossible to have half of your acid dissociated and half undissociated. It's always 100% dissociated. Compared with a weak acid, where weak acids don't dissociate very much. So if you add base, you can force it to dissociate. So if you add half as much base as the acid, then half of your acid will be dissociated, half will be undissociated. So you can get this special pH equal to pH situation here. Now, one other thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with the titration of weak acids and bases is here you have a weak acid with its conjugate base. That's a buffer. But this is not the only point where your solution is a buffer. In fact, this entire region right here is what we call a buffer region because at all points along this graph you have weak acid with conjugate base and solution. So that means along this graph it's a buffer so it's good at resisting pH. Okay, so finally let's get back at the original idea of the titration which this is a lab technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. At this point, I haven't actually showed you how to do that calculation. So let's do it with this question or this example right here. And we're told here that the odd solution had an initial volume of 100 milliliters. So we're going to go ahead and use our equation NAVACA is equal to NBVBCB. We're solving for the concentration of the unknown acid so we can arrange. So CA is equal to NB, VB, CB over NA, VA. In this case, sodium hydroxide gives one hydroxide per molecule. So its equivalent is one, one hydroxide per molecule. The volume of the base that we needed to neutralize the solution was 50 milliliters. And the concentration of the strong base we know is one molar. For the acid, we know that the equivalence, well, it's not stated directly, but you can actually look at this graph. This graph actually tells you that your acid is monoprotic. It only gives one hydrogen ion per molecule. And that's because there's only one half equivalence point and one equivalence point. If you're looking at a polyprotic acid, you will have multiple equivalence points and multiple half equivalence points. So Na is equal to 1. The volume, we're told, is 100 milliliters. 
So now if we go ahead and do this calculation, we can see that we're going to end up with an answer of 0 0.5 molar. So that would be the concentration of the unknown acid solution that we were able to determine using titration.